We had a bad show about this time last year. You know what it was? I was trying to do dads versus grads. You know, you got all the dads because of Father's Day this week, and you also got grads. Everybody's graduating. And I wanted to get a dad to fight a grad. And it didn't get off the ground a year ago. And it's not getting off the ground now. Let's just get it started. Here goes a, a, a top-notch topic. You know, everybody talks about the uh, the five people that you would love to have dinner with throughout history. It's like, I would love to have dinner with Gandhi and John F. Kennedy and all those people you'd love to have dinner with. I want to hear the five people throughout all history present day, now, old, dead, alive, the five people you would want to have dinner with the least. Who are the five people that you would least want to have dinner with? 201-209-9368. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? TV. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? This is Jerry in Boulder. Jerry in Boulder? Yes. Okay, what can I do for you, Jerry? Uh, these people, I don't know who these people are you're talking to, but you... Turn it around, gotta, Jerry, let's do you it. you got to get away from these people. Let's um, turn it around. we got the topic on the table. Let's turn it around. I'll, I'll start, start it off great. Here we go. Um, except for Ari, I would run screaming from the entire cast of Entourage. You mean to have dinner with? To have dinner with. I, I can't stand these people. Yet I keep watching the show for some reason. You mean the actors or their characters? Probably the characters, because I don't know the actors. Uh -huh. But, uh, So you wouldn't want to have dinner with uh, Vincent Chase? No, I would not want to have dinner with or Vincent e, Chase. Or E, Eric. No, none of those. Uh, <laughs> what about Johnny Drama? What about Drama? The worst, the worst one of all, though. It's Turtle. Yeah, they're pretty bad, but that director they have. Oh, Oh. Billy Walsh, he could My make the, he could be the fifth one for your dinner. He's like the fifth Beatle, fifth Entourage guy. Yeah, so you wouldn't want to have dinner with him. In no. A suit. <laughs> what are you doing, no. suit? You know, if that guy would have called me suit, I'd have been like, okay, I'm never working with you. Not worth it. Goodbye. Exactly. It, that's what I don't get about the show. It's like, okay, first of all, the guy offers them the, to, to fully finance their movie if he'll just do this other blockbuster, which would make him more popular. No, we're not going to do that. We want what we want. It's like this this whole show is is a testament to narcissism. Yes. Like, like the director is just, uh, he would be fired like the second day he was on the set. He's a genius. <laughs> you're just like E, you're a suit. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm a suit. <laughs> That's me. I'm all business. Well, thank you for the call, buddy. You, you're, you're, the, uh, the process, the wheels are slowly turning. We're, it's like you know, it's like turning around a uh, an oil tanker. <laughs> it is. Good luck. You know, you. we're going in the wrong direction. You move, you you move like uh, twenty feet every mile, but we got to <laughs> turn it around. Thanks, buddy. Good luck. Huh. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? This is Forrest in Manhattan. Forrest, this is a good call. This guy's a good caller. Oh, that's I, very I nice. I can feel the you. tide turning now. I can feel the tide turning. We had that snooze uh, talking all about uh, a rock concert from a year and a half ago. Then we had uh, Petey calling in some sort of uh, drug stupor, muttering something. Couldn't even read two sentences of a nursery rhyme without uh, without laughing. We had that well, guy. I'm going to try and get it going here for you. We had that guy talking about the uh, some uh, some weird uh, rainbow website. Yeah. Now we turn it around. Now we take the show back. Absolutely. Go ahead, and buddy. And to take the show back, I have a list of five people. It's somewhat terse and self-explanatory. Yes. Who are the five people you would want to have dinner with the least? The five people I would want to have dinner with the least would be Vincent Van Gogh, Henry Ford, Vincent Gallo, Bob Saget, and Mr. Bean. Wow. Oh, uh, uh, hold on a minute. Vincent Van Gogh. Why Vincent Van Gogh? 
Uh, well, you know, I think we romanticize Vincent Van Gogh and a lot of people like that looking back, but, I mean, uh, the guy was a nutcase, and uh, I don't want to be having dinner with a guy with one ear. I feel like I would lose my appetite. Okay. Why Vincent Gallo? Uh, because he seems like, um, well, you know, like he'd be really wrapped up in himself and probably giving you some really awkward stare the entire mm -hmm, time. Mm-hmm. And what referring to himself in the third person. Yeah, yeah I, could, I could imagine that. What about Henry Ford? Uh, well, he was a Nazi sympathizer, I think. Okay. Uh, that in itself. All right. Fair enough. I like how uh, Vincent Van, I like how uh, 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 Vincent Gallo is on, on par with a Nazi sympathizer. Well, if, uh, if you've ever looked at some of Vincent Gallo's writings, it could be said he might be right in that same league. Yeah. Although, uh, who else was on your list? Bob Saget. Why Bob Saget? Uh, Bob Saget also somewhat self-explanatory. Just the uh, the horrible jokes and the being really amused with himself. Yeah. Oh boy. Over uh, over that... a toilet talk, as you that... would say. Exactly. You know what this guy? Bob Saget. We get it. You were on Full House. That's not really me. Now, no one thought it was you, because that's no one on earth. That's yeah, not me, course. the guy from that G-rated show. So now the guy's overcompensating with the the, the filthiest, uh, just, a, just like a stream of profanities now. So that way you get people like, oh, the guy from Full House cursed. Yeah, his jokes aren't Who even cares? jokes. It's anybody yeah. could do that. Yeah, the guy just unleashes a torrent of, uh, of toilet talk. And I'm supposed to be blown away by the fact that he learned some curse words? Exactly. I can't stand it. I would run back to Full House if they started it up again. I would run back. He'd push. Uh, he'd push the Olsen twins out of the way to get Ugh. back on that show. So who, Scott, are the five people you would least want to have dinner with? All right, I had. A, I had. A, I have about a nine, but I will whittled it down to five for brevity. Um, John Stossel. Oh wow, that's a good one. That guy is such a moron. He drives me. Cr I actually sometimes like watching a show because he just he, oh. he drives me crazy. He's this, such an idiot. Look, I am I am somebody who has a uh, moral code, right? You, I'd like I like to think I have a moral code. But for yeah. a while there, I would go into uh, the Costco store uh -huh. and I'd see the John Stossel book. You know what I'd do? I'd rip one of the covers on him, like rip. Yeah. The you know why? Because the guy the guy's ruining people's lives. He's a yeah, you know, he always, he's always like this contrarian for like every corporate, every corporate bully. He just sides. What was it. the name of the book? Give me a break. Yeah, give me a break. This give is organic break. food. You know, organic food's actually worse for you. And he finds one guy to to talk about that. And I think he just likes to call himself a libertarian. That's that's yeah. that's his contrarian thing. That's, that's his angle. I'm a libertarian. I can be I contrarian. That's it. But that's like the cowardly Republican. Guy can't even own that he's a Republican. I'm a yeah. libertarian. I'm a free thinker. Yeah. No, you're not. Guy takes his uh, marching orders. You know where. I look, I'm not going to get political anymore. No need. I got in trouble for that last time. Last time I spoke out against uh, W, I yeah. said that he's stupid. And I but really you voted got, for him twice. I got called on the carpet. Well, I voted for him because I voted for him twice. I am very mad at him now because of gas prices. Yeah, him and uh, Bandar Bush. I will not vote for him a third time. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I wouldn't either. You'd be wasting a vote. Okay, so John Stossel, who else? All right, well, along the news lines, Lou Dobbs. The guy who's trying to keep immigrants out of America. Yeah, he wants to build a fence around America. He's just a... He's, he's a huge... I mean, I didn't even care. I just thought he was kind of a joke before. I saw his, an interview with him on 60 Minutes. And he comes off like such a jerk, <laughs> such an arrogant jerk. And uh, and I think the New York Times they did a um, they did a uh, they did some fact checking on some some things that he said on that 60 minute segment, and they came out totally false. Like, did did you see that? No, I didn't. Oh, well. I read USA Today. Is that What's that? I read USA Today. Yeah, well, I got the color. Well, they didn't have anything on it in the New York section, in in, uh, in uh, the news section of it. You know, usually I catch up what is going on in each state. 
Yeah, yeah, they get a they get a short paragraph for each state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so they they proved that all the stuff uh, that all that stuff that immigrant panic that he's spreading is uh, is less than uh, above board. Mm-hmm. Who else is on your list? All right. Well, okay. Let's follow the line here. Um, we got Lou Dobbs, and who who makes fun of immigrants more than just about anybody? Carlos Mancia. Ugh. That guy. Well, can you imagine sitting down and having dinner with Ugh. him? Oh, He'd my. He'd just be trying to, like, top every last thing he did, Ugh. trying yeah. to make, like, the tables around him laugh, you know? I know. He would be unbearable to sit down with. I could not imagine. That is a fantastic one. Sit down with that guy. He would not stop, like, going for it, trying to make you laugh. And but just like There's driving a, you more nuts, like you're just like staring at your food. Just but like, he wouldn't be content with having you laugh. He'd be he'd be talking so loud. He'd try to get everybody to laugh, everybody yeah. around him, and they'd just be like rolling their eyes, like this guy is really loud. What yeah, he's talking about. You just imagine watching like John Stossel, like, like, would would John Stossel laugh? He'd be like, Carlos, give me a break. <laughs> all right, else? you want all right, you want the the fourth one here? Yes. Tom? Number four. Let's hear it. All right. Um, Chris Tucker would drive me. Talk, talk about someone who can't stop. Mm-hmm. Chris Tucker would drive me insane. I've actually never seen. No, I did. He was in. Uh, was he in Total Recall? No, he was in The Fifth Element. Fifth that yeah, That's the only movie that I've seen him in. Wait till oh, you man. see Rush Hour 2. It's fun. Yeah, I, I missed that one, though. Mike and I bought tickets for Rush Hour 3. We don't want to get shut out on opening day. Is that the Tokyo Drift, or is that was that was two? No, that's, that's three. No, it's not Tokyo Drift. That's, <laughs> I don't remember. That's the Fast and the Furious. Oh right, right. Uh, I have it on my PSP. Jackie Chan is like sixty-four years old now. It's like supposed to be fighting now. It's like pretty soon See? they're going to start doing some uh, stunt doubles. Like you'll know pretty soon he's going to stop talking about how he does all his own stunts. And he won't say that he's not doing them. He just won't talk about how he does all of them. Right, and that's when you'll know. Yeah. Um, uh, number five? Number five. All right, I don't know, I don't know the guy's name. Um, and I think it's actually two guys, but I'm combining them into one. The photographer for American Apparel. And you know you know that guy? He does. I think he does the photography for Vice Magazine, too. Terry Richardson? Yeah, that Ugh. guy. Yuck. Oh, yuck. Totally like, heroin's cool if you can handle it, man. Yeah, you guys are creep. Ugh. I don't like it. You know what, Scott? You did it. What? That is a uh, rock-solid five people. FMU, you're on the air. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing all right. Who's this? This is Brendan from Parsippany. Brendan from Parsippany. What's up, buddy? Not much. I got my list for you. Let's hear it. These are the five people you at least want to have dinner with. Oh, well, one ca- uh, one thing. I actually had Carlos Mencia on my list, but Scott already went over that, so I only okay. have four left. All right. Uh, number one, Quentin Tarantino. Wow. That's Mike actually handed me his list. Quentin Tarantino's on his list. Go ahead. Um, Why is that? Because he would just be talking about Kevin Grindhouse Smith? movies all night? Hmm? He'd be talking about Grindhouse movies all night? Yeah, and just about how like awesome he is and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. These and event- probably Kevin Smith because he wouldn't shut up. Okay. So I wouldn't be able to eat. Yeah. Well, Robert he'd, he'd, Rodriguez. He'd eat all because, the food. Yeah, that too. I didn't even think about that. Good luck getting your hands on any food with Kevin Smith. <laughs> so Robert right. Rodriguez also. Yeah, because um, if anything, he might have probably, he would have probably made the food and mm. With this whole thing, he probably would have spent fourteen dollars on a meal for six. Exactly. Anyone who uh, doesn't work for Miramax on your list. Yeah, basically. You know, you could do then... all of time. You do all of time. You could not want a till of the hun at that dinner, but apparently you're you're really focusing on mid '90s filmmakers. But yeah. But that's all right. Um, that's all right. I don't it's know. Your, something your, about your dinner. It's your dinner. It's it's your dinner. It's your dinner. Go on. Keep going. Last but not least, uh, I was kind of stretching with this one, a little bit, a little bit of an easy one, but Bill O'Reilly, another person who just wouldn't shut up about themselves. So you named Kevin Smith, Quentin yeah. Tarantino, yeah. Robert Rodriguez, and Bill O'Reilly. Who's number five? Well, it was Carlos Mencia, but okay, Scott. Okay, that's right, that's right, you're right. Though. You know what? That is a horrible dinner. You're right, buddy. I would probably end up killing myself. No, don't. Just, I, uh, well, thank God it's not happening. 
you know what? It is happening. Didn't you hear? Oh my God. No, I didn't, Tom. It is happening. You're going to eat with those people. Oh, boy. Thanks, buddy. So do you have a list of five people? I have a list of five people. Let's uh, hear it. Okay. Uh, I'd go with Tony Snow. Tony Snow. The press uh, dude for the White House. Yeah, yeah. Um, Dustin Diamond, a.k.a. Screech. Screech, who's like a repulsive creep now who, uh, from, uh, who does like some sleazy porno movie and is on some VH1 uh, on uh, Celebrity Fit Club. Um, yeah, have you seen any of that? I have not. Um, it, it, it's 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 uh, he's a really um, unpleasant a frightening, person, frightening human being. I've heard about it though. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's entertaining. Was that guy really that overweight to be on that show? Well, um, I think they're get. I think they've gotten like. Uh, I think that show is probably taking care of like the, the big time fatties. Uh huh. So now they're they're just kind of I guess mopping up whatever celebrities are um, desperate I mean, for attention and have a few pounds to lose. So you mean, so it's like if a celebrity is like, like nine pounds overweight, maybe not toned, they actually qualify for Celebrity Fit Club now. Uh, that's what I'm going to say. Look, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm done with Celebrity Fit Club. I'm more excited about a uh, spinoff with Harvey. <laughs> is that, are they doing a spinoff? I hope. Uh, um, I hope I hope he does something with Brett Michaels. That would be a fun show. <laughs> Harvey's Drill Camp of Love, right? That's what I want to see. <laughs> like he yells at everybody, gets them to fall in love, or else. <laughs> so you have on your list, you yeah, Dustin Tony Diamond, Snow. Tony Snow, Dustin Diamond. Who's number three? Okay, number three is a trio. Um, does this does this close out three, four, and five? This, this is three, four, and five. Yeah. Let's hear it. The Dixie uh, Chicks. Billy Crystal. Please say the Dixie Chicks. Now go ahead. No. Who is it? Billy Crystal, Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams. So the, you uh, the comic relief. You don't want the comic relief people coming to dinner with you. No, I don't. Because um, I can just imagine how bad that would be. The only di- way you, you've, you've seen their patter on their specials. It's fun. The only way I would want to be at that dinner is if Billy Crystal promised he would do the jazz man character. <laughs> I saw this. Uh, I saw this advertisement for uh, Comic Relief live from uh, New Orleans, benefiting yeah. the people of New Orleans. And I was. I just thought, haven't they suffered enough? Yes, they have suffered enough. Like Billy Crystal's going to come down and do his routine on the '62 New York Yankees. That's going to apply to their lives. Exactly. Everybody got free autographed baseballs <laughs> for anyone whose house was wiped away during Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> Sean, um, I salute you. Thanks, that right. was a great list. Right, but the way. phones are all lit up, and i got to keep moving. <gasps> FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, it's David from D.C. I love it. How are you doing, man? Thanks for the right. shout-out last week. I gave you a shout Oh, it's that David. Okay, how are you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I got my five here for you. Let's hear it. All right, I'll give you all five. Fred Durst, Joe Francis, Ty Cobb, Ann Coulter, and Comedy's Jay Davis. So, hold on, i got to digest that list for a second. Fred Durst. Right. From Limp so, Biscuit. Yeah, not not just the worst band ever, but, you know, the spearhead of the worst genre of yeah. music ever. And, and he's arrogant about it. That's the one thing. The one thing, if you're in a terrible band... It's yep. another thing if you're in a terrible band that gets popular. It's yet another thing if you're in a terrible band that gets popular and you're arrogant about it, as if you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, and you're enormously influential among teenagers. So that so you get friends teenage Durst. women and they're and they're listening to you instead of their parents. And Coulter. Uh, yes, and Coulter. Uh, you know, profits upon people's ignorance and hatred. And sure, the, sure. Uh, yes, keep going. Ty Cobb. Ty uh, Cobb, the old timey baseball. Anti Semite, racist, yes. killed a guy. Mm-hmm. Joe Francis, Girls Gone Wild, self-explanatory. You wouldn't want to see Fred Durst and Ty Cobb talking, though. That wouldn't be even a little bit interesting to you. Well, I, I, I guess, but uh, I mean, what you marking awkward, your arms up with all there? that ink? Wouldn't that be awkward? What you putting all that ink on your arms for? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are you in the Navy, boy? <laughs> yeah. So go ahead. So uh, okay. who's number five um, again? Excuse me. 
my my last is uh, comedy's Jay Davis. Jay Davis from uh, from uh, from the uh, Tourgasm show. Yes. You know, uh, what? not not just the least funniest, uh, the least funniest, least funniest, not the worst, not just the worst comedian on that show, but uh, he's really. You wouldn't want to see him tell the TLC kind of... killer joke to Ty Cobb. What are you talking about, boy? <laughs> TLC killer, what? <laughs> you see, I'm so I'm so sensitive. I yeah, don't... exactly. I mean, he seems really nice. Like, God, he would he would just fall apart, and I'd feel you know it'd be really awkward for me. They talk about the BTK killer. They call me the, the TLC killer. <laughs> yeah, he would get. But you know, Ty Cobb would end up spiking him in the in the face, right? <laughs> Those cleats would be up on the table. I actually might want to go to that dinner. I'm sorry, David. Okay. That might be a fun dinner. Ty Cobb might stomp the other four people. Fair enough. Just, uh, you know, don't let him find you in an alley because, you know, he might stab you. Thanks, buddy. All right. Have a good night. Woo. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. It's uh, John H. in L.A. John Junk. John Junk. What's up? I got five people. Let's hear it. Okay. First is uh, Abby Hoffman. Okay, Abby Hoffman. Why is that? It just seems like, I don't know, I've currently been kind of real irritated by, like, uh, the boomer icons and just okay. in general. Yeah, so yeah. So I feel like you, you keep feeling like, we got to levitate stuff to uh -huh. make change, and it would just be... We got to make that gravy bowl levitate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, Abby Hoffman. Who else? Ab uh, Andrew Jackson. Andrew uh, Jackson. What's that? History? That's someone from history. I don't even know who that is. He's a, I know who Jay Davis a, is. Andrew Jackson. I'm going to guess he was a president. That's he right. He had something yeah, he to was, do with a war or something. Yeah, he was He was real bad to the Indians. Uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, then else? I got another one from history, because this could be from history, right? Sure, like sure, Absolutely. So then I got uh, the Roman Emperor uh, Claudius. Okay. Uh, Who was your he... first one again? Who's the first one? On your list? Abby Hoffman. Okay. All right, keep going. Claudius. Uh, so Emperor know. Claudius, because he would stutter a lot and just be irritating. Mm -hmm. um, then Alan Moore, you the mean comics the, guy. The comic book guy. I would like to, I would like to see uh, Andrew Jackson and Alan Moore in a discussion. Yeah, and I was figuring it would be really bad because then Alan Moore would be like, you know, like forming connections or something b between the different guests. Or I don't know. It would probably inspire him to do like another historical comic book. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How about writing be... something new, buddy? That's all I say. <laughs> this is based on the character. This is based on Little Miss Muffet. <laughs> yeah, it's like a dark Miss Muffet. Yeah, I'm showing you the dirty version of Little Miss Muffet. It was it was nice the first time and now it's not nice. So who who's number five? Uh, Ice T. Ice T. Why is that? Because I don't know. It just seems like um, kind of like a hip hop like like he's real sleazy, but he tries to be like some kind of hip hop Henry Rollins, but he's like some porno guy and yeah, he's, he's a little just, rough. Yeah. John Junk, thank you. FMU, you're on the air. Hi Tom. Hi, who's this? It's Audrey. Where are you calling from, Audrey? Oh, San Francisco. San Francisco? Yeah. Mm, what's going on? Who do you want on your list of the okay. five people you would not want to, 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 to go to dinner with? Okay, number one, Kathy Griffin. Okay, why is that? Because she's not that funny. Mm -hmm. uh, she seems like she'd be talking the whole time and uh -huh. would uh, interrupt you while, while you're trying to eat and just, you know, she'd take it up to ten. Volume mm -hmm. 10 every time. Okay, I hear you, I hear you. Who's number two? M. Knight. Uh, Shyamalan. I can't, I can't pronounce his last name. Shyamalan. But Shyamalan, yeah. Yes. Because he's so smug and he's always talking about how great he is and if people don't understand his movies. he. I, I read in an interview he said that, uh, well, maybe I'm not drinking the, the, the right wine that everyone else is drinking and going to the same restaurants. So that that really bugged me. Okay, number <laughs> number three. Eric Clapton. Oh, that's a good one. Cause he, I don't know, he's just so overrated, and um, 
He's really not that exciting, a guitar no. player. No, he's terrible. He, he's boring. And he approaches the guitar in such like a, a professor kind of manner. Exactly. It's really, really sterile. You get those people, they talk about, who's your favorite, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, or Jeff Beck? It's a good character test. Yeah, I agree. Who do you say of those three? Jimmy well, Page, what? Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton. Oh, Jeff Beck. Ugh. Wait, oh, really? You think, Je wait, Jeff Beck over Eric Clapton? Well, I would take, Eric Clapton's third. But you got to take Jimmy Page over Jeff Beck. Oh, no, no, of course, Jimmy Page. Well, there you the Yardbirds. Thank you. Who's well, next on your list? Who's, ne who's next okay. on your list, madam? Uh, Carl Malone. <laughs> <laughs> the well, basketball you, don't, you don't agree with me? No, I'm laughing because that's actually a really good one. I wouldn't want that. He'd be talking about his stupid tractor trailer all night. Oh, yeah, and he was on WWF, and, man, that guy's the worst. He's such a dirty player, and I can't stand Utah. Him him, and John Stockton. I, I almost want to put John Stockton in there, but <laughs> yeah. I had to make room for Raymond Eric. Wow, you have floored me with this list. Let me let me just go over this one now because I think this might be very close to what mine is. Carl Malone, Ray uh -huh. Manzarek, Eric Clapton, Kathy Griffin. I would that might not be on mine. Who else? M Night. Uh... M Night. Yeah, that. You got three there that I never would have thought of in a million years, who are amazing. But but you're not jealous of Ray's uh, uh, turtleneck collection. He's got <laughs> he's got a pretty impressive. He would be there I think talking about. Closet. He'd be there the talking about. When I was with, uh, well, Jim liked. Uh, Jim said He's once. He's a shaman. This. Yeah, Jim was a total shaman, and he was. It was 81 years ago you worked with this guy. How many? <laughs> you worked with him for five years, and you're still talking about it 48 years later. How many stories could you, Thank you. possibly Thank have you. left? I... You've, you've talked for more time than you knew him about him. He could have done it in real time at this point. Talk literally. I'm going to describe in real time every moment I had with Jim Morrison ever, starting now, yeah. as if the as get, if get I said it. hi it's to sad. him at USC. It's sad. It is I, sad. Yeah. Thank you for your call. Okay. Bye. So, Paul F. Tompkins, you have a list. I do. Now, this is a slight variation. I don't even know if this is allowed, but uh, this is uh, the list of of the five people. Uh, that I would least like to have dinner with from fiction. You know what? I'm going to allow it. You're going to allow it? I appreciate that. Yes. All right, here we go. Holden Caulfield. Terrible. Genie oh. from I Dream of Genie. <laughs> uh, Mort from Bazooka Joe Comics. <laughs> and the two people from the song Simon and Garfunkel's America. The two people on the bus ride? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean, like, uh, you wouldn't want to... Uh... It's like, uh, laugh, like that's nodding it. on the bus. That is it right Playing there. Playing games with the people. You sat the man in the gravity to was a spy. And this, this is the part that really ruins it when the other one goes, Watch out, I told you, his bow tie is really a camera. I hate those. I, can, I feel like I can see those people so clearly in yeah, my mind. Exactly. And I hate them so much. Yeah. That's not funny. Yeah. They think they're hilarious. Pass me a cigarette. I... <laughs> 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 we smoked the last one an hour ago. Ooh. So we ate a pack... We had a pack... Uh, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. I used to know that song. The best part, though, is when they're counting the cars on the New Jersey Turnpike. I get yeah. a chill when they do that. Why are they coming to New Jersey? <laughs> so they're basically going from Saginaw to New Jersey. What an exciting <laughs> adventure that must have been. <laughs> With those two smug idiots. Yeah. I feel bad for every other person who was on the bus. You know these people don't even need to take a bus. To get exactly. There. It's a lark for them. It's yeah, a fun exactly. lark. Let's ride with the poor people on the bus. <laughs> and they're like, what is well, that song? Some, you know, rich silver spoon, uh, Ivy Leaguers, you know, they're in college. What a, what a fun trip this will be. Yeah. We get in there with the weirdos. Yeah, exactly. The, weir the weirdos who can't afford any other way of getting from Saginaw to New Jersey. <laughs> Imagine being the other people on the bus that have to travel 
by Greyhound yeah. and just how clearly something sad is going on in your life. <laughs> nobody laughs on the, on those buses. Yeah. No, nobody ever laughs on those buses. If you were sitting there, you're like, well, I'm going to go visit my husband in jail, <laughs> and then you hear, you know, yeah, he's these in two young kids laughing because yeah. they're looking at people and whispering to each other. Yeah. Because they're stoned out of their gourds also. <laughs> yeah, a couple of peaties. Yeah, a couple of peaties. Yes! You hear that, Petey? <laughs> he did sound wasted, I have to say. Look, I hope he's not. <laughs> I don't want to throw gasoline on the fire, but he did sound extraordinarily high. I think I'm going to have to arrange an intervention for Petey <laughs> on the air. So let's hear your list, buddy. All right. Uh, first one is Dennis Miller. That's a good one. Uh, why not? Be, why, why wouldn't you want him at dinner? Because he'd be just blathering on about politics, and then when you challenged him on anything, he'd go, Hey, I'm just a comedian. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just here making jokes. Well, those weren't jokes you were just saying for ten minutes. That was a, that was a that was, that was an op-ed piece you just did, and I challenged you on something. Now all of a sudden, you're you're a Henny Youngman. You just tell jokes. <laughs> and if he does tell a joke, I have to break out the Britannica to uh. Yeah. Decipher it. Ugh. Go ahead. Uh, number two, Rudy Giuliani. Bad. Uh, number three, Richard Dawkins. Who? Uh, Richard Dawkins, that uh, atheist guy. Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah. guy. <laughs> uh, number four is David Spade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and number five is uh, any one of those actors from the uh, Sonic commercials. What? <laughs> you wouldn't want to have dinner with Brian Husky? He's a good guy. I know one of those guys. Good guy. Oh, you are wrong. Get off my phone. Brian Husky's a good person. And he's funny. Throw Brian Husky under the bus. Who's on your list, Lori? Okay, my list is kind of obvious. I have an all-boy uh, list, but most of those guys have been be like checked. Por porno people? <laughs> you want uh, no, no, uh, to Al Goldstein at your party? That yeah, who would it. want? By the way, who would want Al Goldstein <laughs> at dinner? Yeah. I don't know. Could you imagine uh, that? I, I guess that Al sitting Goldstein there eating. Like, like, you know, he eats with his mouth open. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Um, 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 um. So who's That's on your list? Gross. Let's hear your list, Lori. Um, no, I'm gonna go with my old girl list because pretty much everyone on my other list has been checked. Okay. Already. Okay, so these are my dinner guests that I would not like to have. All right, over. I'm ready. Paris Hilton. Okay. Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. Misha Barton. All right. Whoever it was that was married to Travis Barker. Okay, yeah. And Nicole Richie. Yeah, who, who, who wrote this list for you? Perez Hilton? <laughs> no. Where, where, where'd you get Did you go to TMZ.com before you wrote this list? They no. helped you put it together? No. You know, you could have done people from history. Well, yeah, I suppose I could have. But you those are the people you literally would not want to have dinner with. No. Because these are people that are at the forefront of my mind. It would right be a now, fast dinner, reason. though. It would be a fast dinner. You know they don't eat much. That That is true. But, you know, then they just spend the rest of the dinner texting someone. Yeah, you know it would just be like... each other and bitching about each other. Yeah, making fun of each other with, right. with their uh, their blackberries. Exactly. You know so. what, Lori? This is a great list. I salute it, and I salute you. Oh, I salute you, too. Hmm. <laughs> FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. Hi, who's this? This is Julie. Julie, where are you calling from? Lower East Side. The Lower East Side. Length or of what? I'm sorry? The Lower East Side of what? Oh, I don't know. Some river. Okay. Do you have a list of the I five I do have people? a list. Oh, I know who this Julie is. How yeah, you, you know me. Yes, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good, 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 good. Your listening party show was hilarious, by the way. Oh, thank you. You're sweet to say that. It was a lot of fun. It was amazing. Yeah. Really, really good. Okay, you want to hear my list? Yes, I do. Okay, number one, Matthew Barney. You, wow, that's... I you, don't like that dude. That oh. is, that's a great one. I mean, holy crap. <laughs> I say that on the air? Yeah. Oof. The, the, you Mar know why, right? Mar I don't Mar need goal. to explain it. My goal is to never see one of those movies. Oh, 
you know, what's so hilarious is that I felt like I had to go. I went to the Guggenheim on, like, the last day. I mm-hmm. got stuck in Cremaster 3, which was the longest one. Mm-hmm. And it was so, oh, my God. It was, like, getting my teeth pulled. And it was that scene where he gets his teeth uh, pulled. Uh, uh, I don't want to hear about it. You don't want to hear about it? All right, nightmares. I'll give you the punchline. This whole thing happens, and then something awful sprouts out of him, no, and some dude no, whose wife no, obviously, no, no, obviously no, dragged him to the do film. It. Don't said, tell me. No, no, no. I don't want to hear it. Who's next on your list? Okay. Uh, Steven Spielberg. Why is that? Oh, he's so pompous. His movies suck. What? You never I, saw Always? Oh, no. I can't. I can't deal with the really? dude. Really? You never saw The Terminal? Horrible. 1941? I don't like it. I don't Batteries like it. Not included? I walked out of Schindler's List, and I've been dragged to a couple of films since. And every time I see them, I'm like, he's hiring mimes. It's people are miming; they're not acting. Who's next on your list, Julie? Okay, um, my list, which is actually written down. Okay, uh, oh, Avril Lavigne. Why is that? Because she's a snooze. Just. I mean, she's biting off of something that happened 35 years ago, and she's making money on it, and nobody who is actually doing it, and she sucks. I mean... Yeah, she's bad. She's bad. Number four? Number four. Oh, John McCain. Why is that? Um, a liar, uh-huh. and totally two-faced, and now supporting Bush when he was completely demolished as a, as a primary candidate in the yes. last election? Yes, yes. I mean, what, what's up with this guy? Why does he keep supporting that's, these people? That's how bad he wants it. That's how bad he wants to be president. That's how bad he wants to be president. But you know what? He'll never be president. Don't worry. Okay. Mitt Romney was going to be our next president. Who? Mitt, 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 oh, my God. Mitt, can you Mitt, imagine? Mitt, 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 Mitt. Chat with me. Mitt, All right, wait. Mitt. How many people have I stopped? I did Matthew Barney, Mike's got Spielberg. A, Mike's got a Romney 08 button that he will not give me. Really? Yes. Why? I don't know. He said he went to a big, he went to a big fundraiser, and he said he met. He said he didn't meet him. He met Mitt. He didn't meet Mitt. <laughs> he said he met the guy who is hopefully going to be working on his campaign for Rhode Island. Shouldn't he already have somebody? Well, no. The Rhode Island primaries are, are, are not are not here yet. No, I know, but. Mike, Mike actually said he's thinking about going up to New Hampshire and, and canvassing, kind of like going door to door. Why? Well, because that's who he's voting for. He's but a why? Mitt man. Does he have a reason? He's a mitt man. Mike's but, a mitt man. Is it just a gut? It's a gut thing? He doesn't know anything about his policy. He just likes the name Mitt. He likes the name Mitt. Well, you know, yes. he must be a baseball fan. Who's number five on your list? Okay. Um, I skipped somebody. Eddie Murphy? Really? Eddie Murphy? Yeah, I mean, he puts on a fat suit and makes so much money, and he's yeah. just not funny. Yeah. Do you think he's funny? I mean, you're a funny guy. I think, you think he think was. Funny? He has been funny. I'd, I'd, put, I'd put Charlie Murphy on he that He was list. funny when I was babysitting for a living. That's what I At remember. he was funny once. His brother. Brother's only the guy where it's like, wait, he looks like, hey, is that Eddie Murphy? Oh, no, he's right. it's Charlie Murphy. All right, and denying paternity, and, you know, won't come out of the closet. Hey, you don't slander him like that. Okay. I'm just, you know, Who, I read Perez that and that's what they say. Um, Oprah. Oprah? Oprah. I mean, Oprah gets these people on her show, gives them keys to a car, and then films them freaking out over getting a car. I don't know. She's, you know, she's from a poor family, and now she's, you know, the richest woman in the world, and she loves to humiliate people with her cash. In my opinion, it looks like every time, like so she's like making people, money making in front people, of people jump and through hoops. You know, you, go into spasms. You don't like uh, like the uh, making people jump through hoops. No, I don't like that. Well, they didn't jump through hoops. They looked under their seat, and there were keys. Yeah. And then I mean, um, figuratively. I mean, I didn't literally. It was not a circus. No, it was like not a human fake. circus. It's a fake concern. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, nice. There we go. It would have to happen. Oh, brother. <sighs> People get worked up.
201-209-9368 is the number on the best show. We are talking about the five people you at least want to have dinner with. Somebody just, uh, we have some came in on the email here. Michael saying, uh, this is a weird one, weird list. Jim Brewer, Colin Quinn, Randy Rhodes. I'm assuming the guitar, he means the guitarist from Ozzy's band, not the... Not the left-wing radio person. Tucker Carlson and anyone who writes for Maxim Magazine. I would, uh, I, w- I, would, I would not mind uh, having dinner with Car- Tucker Carlson. He seems fun. Dave in Toronto checking in with the list. The Game Show Edition. Regis Philbin. Howie Mandel. Pat Sajak. Penn Jillette, And Bob Barker. Really, Bob Barker? Is that offensive? FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. Hey, who's this? This is Tom from Minneapolis. Tom from Minneapolis. Well, are you? Uh, not the, is that the toothpaste? Uh, no, I'm not the toothpaste guy. Oh, that's Tom. <laughs> Tom from Maine. Okay. Yeah, that's the Maine guy. What's going on I in have... Minneapolis tonight? Who's on your list? Uh, my list is uh, kind of all over the place. The first one is uh, Kevin McHale, and not as a player, but as the Timberwolves' uh, general manager. He won for the best GM from Forbes, but we have minus Kevin Garnett, like a terrible team. Um, uh, the next would be Fred Phelps, the guy from Topeka that uh, his family protests all those funerals of uh, people that have died of AIDS and all yeah, that. Yeah, he's a creep. Yes. Yeah, that guy. That's number two. Who's number three? Number three is Ray Romano. Worst show ever. I don't get it. Uh, I would number... love to see that dinner with Fred Phelps sitting next to Ray Romano. <laughs> well, the next one is uh, Tyra Bank. Yes. Why is that? Uh, I just find her really annoying. I don't know what it is, but as soon as she opens her mouth, it's just, uh, it's like... I don't know. I'd rather listen to someone run their fingernails down a chalkboard, actually. She's a union buster. Also, union buster. Oh, well, that's even one more good reason to not like her. <laughs> the people from America's Next Top Model went on a strike because they're writing on that show. And then, uh, you know, trying to say, hey, we're writing here. This is the thing's not getting written by itself, even though it's, quote, unquote, a reality show. <laughs> and then they were trying to join the Writers Guild, and, and they, they, were, they were holding out and... She did not. Uh, she let. She let them uh, twist in the wind. They all got fired. Yeah, that's that's no good. And num- number five, uh, I think it would just because I don't know what they would talk about, but yes. uh, it would just be annoying. It would be Lars Ulrich. Yeah, he'd be pretty bad. The drummer from Metallica. Yeah, I thought about throwing in his dad too, but you know, you only have five. So that weird. He's like that weird tennis wizard. Yep. Yep. That's that's my five. Hopefully, uh, uh, some... I salute okay. you. Okay, ah! we got to blast through these now. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. This is Josh in Miami. Hey, Josh in Miami. How are you doing tonight? I'm wonderful. I got a top five here. Well, let's hear it. But this is the Josh who came all the way up. This is the, the Josh uh, who came the, all the way up to the listening party. Let's hear it. Uh, number one, I got Frank Gehry. What? The uh, architect. And why is that? Um, well, I mean, he's just kind of in that believe his believes his own hype category. Okay. Where uh, you know things just keep circling around him, and he just and he just gets swept up in it, and he's you know now he's king king of earth. Okay, let's hear it. Who's number two? Number two is Tyler Perry. The guy from uh, who plays Medea, the uh, Diary of a Mad uh, Black Woman. He does all those yeah. things. He has a new show called House of Pain on TBS. Uh, I want everybody to know uh, it's a new sitcom. It's worth checking out. Well, I'm sure it will be painful. Why Why? Uh, why him? Well, I just can't imagine him doing, like, uh, some, you know, thinly veiled morality play by and using, you know, four characters in, in the course of the meal. Mm-hmm. All right, who's next? Number three, I have Morgan Spurlock, because I've seen that guy eat enough, and he's kind of gross. He's like, cause he's like the, uh, he's like the, uh, he's like the poor man's Michael Moore. 
Right. I mean, he really blew the lid off of uh, the fact that McDonald's might not be healthy for you. Hey, you're right. I didn't know that until I saw that movie. Wait, you knew uh, that? What's that? You knew that? Well, I had an inkling. Okay. Who else? Number four, I have uh, Paolo Coelho, that author guy. I don't know who that is. He wrote The Alchemist, and he's kind of into that kind of megalomania kind of religion sort of thing. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Who else? Uh, I was going to say Joe Francis, but I'll do you one better and say Sage Francis. Who is Sage Francis? He's that annoying spoken word hip-hop guy that's on Epitaph. You're a smart guy. You're an egghead. Too smart for oh. me. FMU, you're on the air. Tom? Yes. Hi, Harry. And, uh, I have a list. Who, who's on the list? Number one, the person who invented the phone you're talking on. Oh, sorry, my phone's bad? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Who's well, number, um, who's number one? Phil. Who? Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil, okay. Yeah, and uh, next one is because I'm Jewish, it'll be Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler. Finally, someone says Adolf Hitler. Jeez, really? oh, wow. it took an hour for somebody to finally say they didn't want Hitler. Everybody made, I think we got everyone from Tourgasm listed, but uh, finally someone gets around to mentioning Hitler. Wow. Um, next, someone mentioned this Dustin Diamond. I just, I think there he's really okay. delusional. Lee, thankfully, we're back to reality now. Thank goodness. We got our bearings about us. We went off down a, a road we should not have gone down. Uh, we lost our marbles a little bit, putting Hitler on the list. Thankfully, Screech, we got our priorities set again. Who's number four on your list? Um, Avi Arad. He, just, he does stuff for a Marvel movie. Yeah, he runs, he runs Marvel. Okay, now, we're, now we're, uh, we're on the right track. I would, though, tell me, though, seriously, you wouldn't want to see Hitler and Screech at the same table. That would be an interesting combination. And who's number five? P. Diddy. Because I think he's pompous, and I think he thinks he's better than he really is. And like, Wait, you think he's better than he really is? I think he thinks that he's better than he really is. Like, yeah. I think he has a god complex. You think so? Yeah, I think... Cause there's an episode of Making the Band that I saw where he had the band go, like, three hours to get on a piece of cheese cake. Yeah, you walked out to Juniors. He made them walk out to Juniors. Yeah, and then when they came back, he was too good and already left. So I, I, I don't have any respect for You didn't him like now. that. You thought he disrespected the band. Yeah. I mean, I don't really watch that show very much, but I saw some, like, VH1 reality, like, best reality moment thing, and I just thought, I'm like, that's just not... Oh, your phone its ripping through my head. It's like making my head vibrate. It's like chewing on aluminum foil. I don't think anyone's mentioned Gene Simmons yet. You would not want Gene Simmons at your dinner? No. That's a good one. Number he two, would who? Me, he, would, he would talk about himself, and then he would tell me I have to work, uh, uh, like, uh, 16 hours a day for the rest of my life. To That's be right. Yes. Who's number two? Uh, Dave Sim, uh, the guy that did Cerebus. Yeah, he's I'm like a, a creepy misogynist. Yeah, he's, a, he's always insane, yeah. Yeah. He'd bring all those, like, He's the guy who drew this comic. What is it? It's Cerebus? Yeah. He drew it. He just he didn't draw it. He I guess, did he draw it? Or some other dude nah. drew it? Uh, some backgrounds on it or something? I don't know. It was yeah. him and some other dude. But he it's him, basically. There's It's like, they're the, you ever go to the comic book store and you see these black and white phone books covered with dust? It's his stuff. And it's like, it's like uh, how many thousands of pages of this uh, aardvark? Is that what it is? An aardvark? Yeah. His life. Oh, brother. You couldn't pay me to read that stuff. Go ahead. Who's number three? Uh, the bad number guy three, on The Wire. I... What's the that? one guy in season three of The Wire. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll start talking about Deadwood, too, if you want. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't. Wa I told you. I watched that with my, uh, with my family. I was repulsed. I thought we were going to watch a good old-fashioned western. I thought uh, Roy Rogers was not in that. No, he was not in it. So go ahead. Uh, this guy might start out uh, kind of entertaining, but once washed, uh, Christopher Hitchens, uh, he'd probably just turn into just bullying, uh, incoherent mess. Yeah, he'd be complaining about Mother Teresa. 
jumping up and down on the table. And then defending uh, the Iraq war, yeah. Yeah, he's like one of those guys, he's like, I'm proud to be an alcoholic. <laughs> like It <laughs> makes me wittier. Yeah, great accomplishment there. Go ahead. Number four? Uh, number four, I'll just say uh, another concern blogger, Michelle Malkin. Okay. Uh, since someone took out Ann Coulter. And number five, uh, since someone Hitler, I'll say uh, Joseph Goebbels. You say Goebbels. Go what is it? Goebbels. Goebbels? Oh, I don't even know how to say the guy's Show name. no respect. Say Goebbels. I'm sorry to disrespect him. Who would you rather have at your thing? Joseph Goebbels or George Goebbels? <laughs> I'd actually put those two at the table together. Goebbels I'm and sure. Goebbels. I'm sure I've heard his name said correctly in my life, but uh, that time I was just channeling George Goebbels. So far we got we got Goebbels and Hitler. We got to get Goering and Rommel before yeah. people finally have some sense of justice with their lists. And maybe Mussolini. Hmm. I still would rather eat with Hitler, but oh, Robert Kelly from Tourgasm will drive me up the wall. Yeah, he'll talk Paul about Paul it. He'll talk about that leg injury. Thanks, buddy. All right. The Wire. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing all right. Who's this? This is uh, Ted in Greenpoint. Greenpoint, where's that? Greenpoint is over by uh, McCarran Park, actually, in Brooklyn. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Where you hang out? That turkey bar? <laughs> hang out there all the Turkey's time? Turkey's Nest, yeah. Turkey's Nest. Always find me there. Go ahead. Let's hear your list, champ. Number one, Kim Gordon. Okay, why is that? Because I'd be, like, afraid she was going to start dancing at any second, you know? I'd just be watching her all the time out of the corner of my eye. Okay, number two. Cindy Adams. Cindy Adams. Only in New York, kids. <laughs> Only in New York. The thing she's attributing to New York could happen anywhere else. <laughs> number three. Yes. Salvador Dali. Why is that? Because of that mustache, and then, yeah. You wouldn't want to see him eat with that mustache? Yeah, and all that surrealism. It's, it's, okay, number four? Michael Moore. Why is that? Takes all the fun out of everything, you know? Kind of a drag. Yeah, what a bore. What a, what a jerk <laughs> with his search for justice. Yeah, Much it's not fun. And I'm going to close it out with uh, Captain Jack. Thank you. There you go. Thanks, buddy. FMU, you're on the air. Last couple. Hello. Hello, what's your name? Me is Paul from Kendallville, Indiana. From what? Kendallville, Indiana. Kendallville, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Well, let's hear your list, buddy. Okay, my first one is Richard Belzer. Because <laughs> everything's a conspiracy theory. You couldn't mention anything without him relating it to, you know, his conspiracies. I just watched a great video on YouTube of Richard Belzer when he was on some show with Hulk Hogan and Mr. <laughs> T. And then Hulk Hogan... It's like, I'm going to do the sleeper hold on you. And he puts him in the sleeper hold, and he, like, knocked Richard Bay unconscious and, like, <laughs> let him go, and he fell, and he banged his head on the floor. Uh, and and it's my like, next one would be Chrissy Hines. Chrissy Hines, why is that? Well, I'm, I'm presuming that you know, I could pick any restaurant. So this is the Peter Luger Steakhouse. Okay. It's a total vacant, and she would, like, set the place on fire. All right. Okay. Number three. Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor read, Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt, because I read she was a cheapskate. So okay. she would be taking all the splendas and stuff of them in her purse. Okay. Number four. You. Uh, Mario back. Alonza. Who? Mario Alonza. That's an obscure cultural reference. He was a opera singer in the 50s. He did the tour? Uh, he does the Perillo tours? That's Mario, Mario Perillo. Mario Alonza, he was like, they made him a big star in the 50s, and he was... Real good looking, but he, he literally ate himself to death by the time he was 35. Okay, you wouldn't want him, Mario Lanza, okay. okay. The next one is Diamond Jim Brady. Diamond Jim Brady, another person from history, I'm assuming. Not yeah, the guy from like, Black Oak, Arkansas. He, would like, he, he had his own table at Delmonico's, and he would, what he would do is he ordered like 300 oysters and vintage champagne, and at the end of the dinner, he would insist that we split the tab. Unpleasant. Yes. How are things in Candleville, Indiana? Uh, hot. Hot? Hot and, hot and dry. I would make some reference to it being hot and the candles melting, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. FMU, you're on the air. FMU, you're on the air. FMU, you're on the air. Hello, Tom. 
Tom? Yes. This is Dr. Ninja from Brooklyn. <sighs> Hello? What's I have up, a list buddy? for you. Let's I have a hear list. It. Uh, number one at the head of the table, Mussolini. Okay, Mussolini. You don't want him at your dinner. Who is number two? Tom Hanks. All right. Number three, Jerry Garcia. All right, I like this list so far. Who's number four? Axl Rose. Okay, and number five? It's a tie between Tipper Gore and Ari Fleischer. Ari Fleischer? Yeah, it's kind of, he's cool, but he's a professional liar. thought he said something bad. I don't think he did, though. Sorry, Dr. Ninja. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, I got a list for you. Oh, what's your name? My name is Marty. Let's hear your list, Marty. Where are you calling from, buddy? Edison, New Jersey. All right, let's hear it. All right, right off the bat, Sam Margera. What? Yeah, man. You don't want him at the dinner? No. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Just Yeah, I just think, uh, you know, he's just taking uh, too many shows. Number too many two. Shows have, like, kind of ruined it for him. Number two. Phil Knight from Nike. Good one. Number three. Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray. You and that other guy mad about Rachel Ray. I just see her face all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Number four. Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. Why is that? Did he show up naked? Plays he's bongos? On every, he's on the cover of every magazine with, like, a shirt off. Really? What magazines are you reading? <laughs> what, do you, what do you subscribe to, 1999 Magazine? Uh, you know, in the supermarket, like all those videos. Awesome. Yeah. Number five? Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller. Why is that? Yeah, I just think he would be, like, overdoing it the whole night. Mm hmm. Like in every movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ride out a lot of cringy moments, uncomfortable pauses. Yeah, or just, like, obnoxious uh, bantering. I hear you. <laughs> Last two. FMU, you're on the air. Hey, Tom, it's Hatch. Hatch? going on? In the WFMU uh, uh, listening DJ uh, Hall of Fame. Oh, uh, thanks. Fellow DJ. Fellow DJ. Not as funny as you, though. People can hear your show when? Tuesday mornings, 9 a.m. to noon. How'd your show go today? It was better than last week's. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Well, you know, sometimes you got to take it. you got to move it forward. Get better Indeed. by 1%, that's enough. And you are having a much better show than last week, too, not because the last week's show is bad, but because tonight's is excellent. Oh, I like that. It's a compliment. I got Let, a list for you, Tom. Let's hear your list. All right. Uh, scratching Rachel Ray off. I hate her, but I got somebody else to replace her. Who's that? Annie Leibovitz. The photographer. Horrible celebrity photographer. Okay. Number two. Jonathan Safran Foer. The author. Terrible Brooklyn author. Okay. <laughs> that 9-11 flip book thing. That's just in bad taste. I hear you. Number three? Uh, Daniel Johnston would be very uncomfortable to have dinner with him. Brilliant guy. I would not want to eat next to him. Perfect. Uh, number four? Number four? Uh, Frank DeFord of Sports Illustrated fame. He's on NPR Wednesday mornings and does these terrible commentaries that just... Make me sick. He's got a really bad Bud Abbott mustache, too, if I remember correctly. Ugh. Every, every, it's terrible. It's the, worst thing, it's the worst thing on the radio. Number five. Uh, indie rock kin make, kingmaker Ryan Schreiber of Pitchfork. You would not want to eat next to the guy from Pitchfork. Why is that? Ugh. I mean, you want to hear him talking about the new Fujia and Miyagi record for an hour or something like that? Uh, I don't think uh, that sounds like a lot of fun to me. You know what? That's your list. It's not my list. Guy's always been nice to me. Well, not going to throw under the bus. But you know what? Your uh, FMU brethren can't throw you under the bus. This is what they Thanks, call Tom. a conundrum. I'm caught in the middle. It's a war. Well, you know, I'm not going to start a war over that guy. You know what? Just a list. It is just a list. Thanks, buddy. Have a good night, Tom. You too. Man. Last call. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Who's this? This is Noah in Brooklyn. Noah in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. What part of Brooklyn? Flatbush. Flatbush. Let's hear it. What's you got a list of five? Yep. Uh, I got it. Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling, the uh, yep. Republican uh, <laughs> pitcher for the he, uh, Red Sox. 
He delivered the election. He delivered the election. The guy who said, like, didn't he say, like, God bless Bush? No, that was Johnny Ramone. <laughs> he said something like, he said something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, number like Carson two? Carson Daly, of course. Carson Daly, number two. Why is that? Uh, for so many reasons. We, we, we don't have to get into that. If you don't want. Okay, number three? Uh, Thomas Friedman. Who? The economist. Uh, I don't know stuff like that. <laughs> Tell me why. Um, he gets really excited about Cinnabons in, in India and, and calls that uh, globalization working. Let's hear number four. Uh, Ariel Sharon. Don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, he's, he's dead anyway, so I can't really have dinner number with him. Number five. Uh, Bono and uh, Jeffrey Sachs. Don't know yeah. who they are. They, they come <laughs> or is it Bono? Got me. Yeah. Jeffrey Sachs, who's that? The guy from Shine, the piano player? Uh, no, he's just he's just a tagalong economist. This is a, this is actually a list from my economist. Um, you hate roommate. the economy. Why do you hate the economy so much? No, I don't know. You have to ask the economist about this list. He was too shy to call in. Oh, so you're just calling it? You're you're a uh, surrogate caller. Yeah. Well, who would be on your list then? Let me hear somebody. Right on your list. Well, well, A Rod was on my list. Why is that? You met them? Um, he's just he's just too but good of a boy. He's just a, a boy scout. You wouldn't want to eat dinner with A Rod. <laughs> oh, he might be fun for a little bit, maybe. No, 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 A Rod. Yeah, Mike just said he'd take you to some kind of take you to a a gentleman's club. <laughs> I've never been to one. That would be fun. I think I love Especially how they're called gentlemen's thing. clubs too. Because only the finest gentleman <laughs> can be found inside. I haven't seen you there. Thanks, buddy. <gasps> Last one. I can't resist. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. It's Susie in Manhattan. Susie in Manhattan. Let's hear How your are... list real fast. Okay. How are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. Here it goes. Um, first one, Robin Bird of the Robin Bird Show. Yes. Okay. Rose, right? Porn- pornographist. Yeah. Um, second would be Kate Spade. I heard she has really bad breath all the time. I forget what that disease is called. Um, third would be Vincent D'Onofrio because he just seems like such a know-it-all. Like, uh-huh, makes those uh-huh. hand gestures all the time. Okay. Yes. Um, fourth one would be Barbara Walters because okay. of her voice and she's just annoying. All right. Number five? Five would be Deborah Messing just because she's boring. What? Yeah, she's boring. She doesn't have anything to contribute. Hey, well, well, what, do you write for Gawker? <laughs> no. You wish you did, though, don't you? <laughs> no. You wish you wrote anyway. for Gawker. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you wish you wrote for Gawker? No, I don't. You I don't? just wanted to contribute those five. Deborah Messing, yeah. really? Yeah, really. Yeah, not not uh, not Hitler. You're well, somebody else the, already said Hitler. You're mad at the woman from uh, Will and Grace because she's boring. Yeah. No, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you have you. a good night. Thanks for calling. <gasps> Here's Mike's list. General Douglas MacArthur. I don't know who that is. I'm assuming it's some sort of pro wrestler. Shane McGowan. Oh, he's the guy from the Pogues. Oh, I think it's time for me to go back to school. Adolf Hitler, Andy Dick, and Robin Williams. That's a pretty good list. One last one. I can't stop. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. How are you? All right. Who's this? This is Charlotte from Montclair. Charlotte, let's hear it real quick. The list of the five people you at least want to have dinner with. By All the way, right, you're well, in Montclair. Who, who, somebody famous lives in Montclair, right? Um, I actually think a pretty good amount of wealthy people live here but i mean like i don't give me one name give me one um stephen colbert <laughs> you ever see him on the street um actually yeah i think i've seen him at starbucks <laughs> yeah you get your little autograph book you bring it with you no 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 not, let's hear your list time, at least real fast all right well number one was katie Corrick. okay why is that because i just Genuinely hate her. Okay. Number two? And, um, what? Number two is? Uh, Rosie O'Donnell. Why is that? 
Because she'd just be lecturing everybody the whole time. All right. Number three? Um, Gilbert Gottfried, because of his voice. Uh-huh. Um, and then I know somebody already said Axl Rose, but he was definitely on my list, too, because I don't know if I could eat and stare at those dreadlocks the whole time, you know? Okay. Number four? four is that number four? Yes. Who's number five? Number five for us was, uh, for me was a tie between Bono and James Blunt. You wouldn't want to hear James Blunt sing that song? Definitely not. My life and hey. Exactly. You're, you're beautiful. <laughs> you're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. Self-explanatory, yeah. And I see your face <laughs> in a crowded place. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. I like that song. I got to admit it. No, I don't like that oh song. Oh, my God. That is oh, the worst song say. ever. That's like, that guy, uh, that guy's like a Hall of Fame uh, bad with that song. Yeah, that's he, exactly why I would not want to sit through a meal with him. James Bond can look in the mirror and see uh, Don McLean looking back at him. <laughs> the late 50s, still playing You're Beautiful. Exactly. Bad news, Jack. That's your life. Enjoy it now. You might want to... <laughs> You might want to think about other things than you're beautiful right now because you're going to be thinking about it for a long time. That's all he's ever going to get. Thank you for your call. Bye. Yes. They said it couldn't be done. They said tonight was an L. Maybe the most successful call-in segment ever. I knew it. I knew it. It crushed. Best show's on fire. People can't stop the show. You can't top the best show. You can't stop the best show. Birds of Avalon.